All right, my friends, so now we have all of these blogs being listed on the homepage, right? But what I'd like to do is hook it up. So if we click on one of these, then it goes to a blog details page and we show the full content for that blog. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to talk about route parameters. And in a nutshell, route parameters are a variable part of a route. But for each of these routes, we'd still want to show the same kind of page component. It would be a blog details page component every single time. It's just that this part of the route would be different and it would represent maybe the ID of the blog or in some cases it could be a slug. So it could be like hello world, which would be the blog title with a dash in between the words, right? In each of these cases, we're going to show the same page component, but inside that component, we just show this particular blog, whatever this ID is associated with, right? So these things here that change, these changeable parts of the route, they are route parameters. And we can set up route parameters in quick applications pretty easily. And the way we do this, if we go to the source folder and then to routes is by creating a folder, first of all. And in fact, we'll create a blog folder first because we want forward slash blog to be in the route. And then inside that, I'm gonna create a new folder and a route parameter is declared inside the folder name and it's inside square brackets. So we'd say square brackets and then whatever we want to call the route parameter, it could be slug. In our case, it's going to be ID and then close your square brackets. And then inside this, we would have our index.tsx. This is our component. So now to show this page component, we would have to go to forward slash blog because of this folder, then forward slash and then it would be a route parameter. So it could be one, it could be two, it could be 999, it could be ABC, whatever, right? And that route parameter would be captured by quick. And then we could use it inside this component to fetch the blog that we need using that route parameter. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna make a new component, export default components, and click on this to import it. And this is the component that we're going to show for the blog details. So whenever we click on one of these in the future, it's going to go to that particular route and we're going to show this component right here. Let me just return a blank template for now. We'll do a div. We'll come back to this shortly. But also what I'd like to do is I like to go to the index page over here where we actually list out all of the blogs and we need a link right here, maybe a button or something that links to this particular page and it's going to be different for each blog isn't it because it's going to have the id in the href after forward slash blog so let's create the link down here underneath the paragraph so link and we do need to import that as well up here from quick city like so scroll back down here so for the text we will say read if i can spell it read more and then for the href it's going to be curly braces because we need to output something dynamic, a variable, the ID. Now I could do this in a template string, but instead I'm going to use a regular string to say forward slash blog forward slash. And then after this, just concatenate the blog dot ID property. Okay. So it's going to be forward slash blog forward slash one or two or three, etc. Now I want to go to the blog details page right here inside this folder. And I just want to output blog details page like show to show you that no matter what blog we click, it's going to go to this component, this page. So let's go over here. I can click on read more and we see the blog details page. If I go on a different one, blog details page. Now notice up here, it's forward slash blog and then forward slash three in this case. In this case, it's five. In this case, it's one. So this part of the URL is different. This is the route parameter that changes, but we're always showing this blog details page. So what we need to do now is when we go to one of these pages, we need to figure out from this component, this route parameter, and then use that to fetch that individual blog so we can show it in the templates. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna fetch data on the server again, much like we did inside this index page over here. We use this onGet function, to request the data. So what I'm gonna do is be a little bit lazy and just copy all this, including the interface blog data because we're using the same type of data. I'm gonna paste that up here. We need to import this type request handler. So let me go back over here and copy that as well. Grab it here and paste it in. We can get rid of the document head because we're not using it in this page. Just the request handler, okay. All right, so after we've done that, now we don't want an array of data back. We're just getting a single blog this time. So get rid of this array syntax right here. 
We still have a function called onGet, which we export, which is a request handler. We're getting the blog data back, which is described here. It's an asynchronous function. And we say console log fetching the data. I don't know whether I showed you that before in the terminal down here on the server, but I'll show you in this lesson. And then right here, we're fetching the data. Now this, this time needs to be forward slash the ID. Now, where do we get that ID from? Well, we can destructure it from an object up here that we get access to inside this function and it's called params. So that params object right here contains any wrap parameters on it. So I can say down here params and then whatever we named it up here in the folder, that's the name here. So .id in our case. And that is now gonna fetch this single individual blog, all right? Now, again, just like before, we can use the use endpoint hook down here to grab it. So I'm gonna paste that in, use endpoint. It's gonna be called blog data again. And this time it's blog data without those square brackets because we're just getting a single one. We need to import use endpoint. So let me do that. In fact, I'll copy it from over here because again, I'm very lazy. So copy that, paste it in down here. We don't need the link, but now we're importing that. And now we can use this stuff, this blog data down here. And again, we need to use the resource component to do that. So what I'm gonna do is delete this stuff right here. And I'm gonna come up here and give this a class just in case we want to style it a little bit different later. So I'm gonna call this class blog. And then inside here, I'm actually just gonna paste this resource component. We need to import it up here. So where is it? This one here, resource. And then, oops, we get some kind of error. All right, sorry, this is from Quick, not Quick City. Let me get rid of it there. And it's up here from just Quick, not Quick City. So we have that resource component. And we've used this before, so this should be a little bit familiar with you. We pass through the value, first of all, which is this, blog data. Then we have an on pending state where we return a little template while it's loading. And that's just a div that says loading. When it's resolved, we fire a function that gets access to the data, the blog that's returned to us, and we return a template for that blog. Just a div inside that in H2 and a paragraph tag, we output the blog title and also the blog content. So now for every route that we go to with different route parameters, we should be getting that individual blog using that route parameter, then injecting that into the page over here. So let's save this, cross our fingers. I'm gonna go back to the home page. Let me just refresh for good measure. I'm gonna click on this one, Marmite rules. And yep, that works, awesome. Go back, Zelda, yep. That works, Mario Kart, awesome. So this is all working.